Hey everyone, I've been getting a lot of requests for the art supplies that I use when altering cards. So I thought today we would go over the basics of what you can pick up or see what you already have on hand to get started. First up, of course, you'll need your cards. I'd recommend if you're just starting out to pick some cheap commons, cheap foils, and something darker, depending on whether you're wanting to practice with paint or marker extensions or foil extensions. Next, let's go over paint. I use acrylics, but there are many different kinds at different price points, depending on how invested you want to get into this hobby. Uh, here we've got some craft acrylics like Folk Art, Anita's, um, Apple Barrel is also a good option. You can normally find them in Walmart or in your local craft store for around or under a dollar per bottle. If you're looking to buy a set at a mid-level price range or like a student grade or kind of on the cusp between student grade and professional, I'd recommend these My Artscape acrylics. They're a little heavier bodied than the craft acrylics, but they work really well. I also think that Arteza is a similar comparable brand. I didn't put it in the video here, but if you've heard of them, I feel like every art channel out there has advertised them at some point. Um, they're about the same quality level. I'm also showing here some acryla, acrylic gouache paints, just a primary mixing set. I think what's important to note with a gouache, if you go that route, that it needs to be acrylic gouache. Regular gouache is water-based and can rub or wash off the card. Last but not least for the acrylics is my personal favorite brand, Golden Acrylics. I use their fluid acrylics, which go down nice and smooth. They're very fine pigment. They blend really well. They are a little more of an investment up front, but you use so little paint when you're actually painting on a card because that canvas is so small that one of these bottles will last a long time. Next up, permanent markers. I started out altering cards with Sharpies. I just had some in a drawer on hand and that's what I used to attack a Shuttle Hedgehog back in the day. And I, I feel like that's a great alt option if you're just starting out and don't want to invest a lot of money up front. I will say that they work well on commons and rares, non-foil cards, if you get the metallics to work as like a base coat, but otherwise they work really well on stripped foils as well. And if you can't find Sharpies in your area, you might also keep an eye out for these Bic markets or markings. They keep changing their name, but they work very similar to Sharpies. It's a permanent alcohol-based marker. It's a cheaper version than like Prismacolors or Copics. And last but not least, we've got this Prismacolor color blender on top. I use that for cleaning up edges. Now for the peripheral supplies, I use tape, specifically scotch satin finish gift wrap tape because it doesn't melt in acetone, which is important because you don't want to deal with a goopy mess. I use Q-tips to dip into the acetone to actually strip the cards to get it down to the foil layer. And because I buy my acetone in bulk, which is like a cheap brand off Amazon, I pour it into a smaller container so I don't accidentally knock it over because uh, nobody wants to deal with a big spilled bottle of acetone. That helps quite a bit. If you go that route, I recommend you make sure that you aren't using plastic because some plastics will melt in acetone. Now on to brushes. I think if you're going to skimp in any of these supplies, don't skimp on the brushes. Honestly, you can get a pretty good set for pretty cheap. For example, these My Artscape brushes, I've had them for several years now and they have a really fine point and you can get like a set for under $20 that will last you a long time if you take care of them. Highly recommend, do not skimp on brushes. You're gonna want something small for cards if you're looking to get those little details. Don't skimp on your brushes. Here's an example of that case. I promise this video isn't sponsored. I just have been using these brushes for a long time and I think they're a good deal for the price. So here you can see it in the lovely case. I haven't even gotten to these yet. You can see I've only used a few of them, so. Take care of your brushes, guys. If you guys want a brush care video to help keep your brushes nice for a long time, let me know and I can put one of those together as well. On the subject of brush care, if you can pick up one of these, the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver Pucks, it's like a waxy soap that you can use to clean out your brushes, get all the extra acrylic particles out of there to help get them last longer and condition the bristles. I'd recommend it. You can get them on like Amazon. Here I've got a water cup um, container that I use. Uh, I always have one container for water that's clean and one for dirty rinsing water. You can use just like a jar. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. 
And then lastly here, I've got the Masterfin's Stay Wet palette. This is something I wish I'd learned about a long time ago. It's a really, it's really convenient if you can't complete a project in a sitting. You can use it to keep your paints fresh, and especially if you're mixing your own colors, uh, it saves you a lot of time and helps you keep uh, reduce a lot of paint waste, which is fantastic. And of course, the most important, most important supply that you will want to have on hand is a sweet studio cap because nothing will keep your painting skills on your toes like trying to keep cat fur out of acrylic paint. Okay guys, that's everything I've got for you for the supplies video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give it a like and I will see you next week. Bye!